Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So last week, actually it was two weeks ago, I made a comparison of a thousand horsepower V8 versus a thousand horsepower I4, and then we kind of went head to head to see how the different power delivery was and stuff. There were a lot of comments on that video talking about different ways to approach things. So I thought today we would take advantage of one of those approaches. Now I thought that the new automation update was going to be out by now, but it isn't, which is fine, because it gives us the opportunity to do more of these comparison videos. I'm calling them the ultimate challenge, which is literally the most generic thing ever, but it's fine. Let, let's get into this. So today I'm going to be using this work truck as my basis. Last time we used a Datsun. Today, trucks? I don't know. I like trucks. We will modify it a little bit as the base, uh, just because it's a little bit too work truck spec for this. We, we gotta make a few small changes. So the comparison today, and I guess the comment that I want to address, is people th said that they think the displacement difference between the two was the most like limiting factor, and I, I understand that. Last time I was trying to compare power delivery rather than uh, just trying to make the engines exactly the same. The power was pretty much exactly the same, the torque was the same, the RPM was the same, everything was good in comparison, but the torque curves, i.e. like this stuff that you can see here, uh, was drastically different on those two engines, and one had a lot more power in the low end, that being the V8, the other a lot less power in the low end, and therefore the power delivery was a lot different. Last time, a 1,000 horsepower was too much for my Datsun, uh, so today we're doing a, a truck that is a 2020 variant. We can put big tires, we can go all-wheel drive. We're going to eliminate that issue, and we're also going to stick with 500 horsepower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a 90-degree V8 out of cast iron again, just like we did last time, except it's going to be 4 liters, and it's going to be 4 liters square. Now the reason I'm going 4 liters, and in fact 4 liters square, is because we can get the same thing with the i4 engine, at least I believe we can, we should probably test that. Yeah, so the i4 here, uh, I believe, if we raise this up high enough, we can fairly easily get up to 5.4 liters at maximum size, so there is room to do a 4 liter variant. In fact, we could do a 5 liter variant, but for the sake of the challenge, 4 liters. So 90 degree cast V8, 4 liter is approximately, this is too big, let me get that perfect. Okay, so it's just under 4 liters, point, well it's 86 on either side, if I go up on even one of them then we pass. So 86 mil, 86 mil is the stroke and the bore. Uh, this time we're not going to do push rods, I know people didn't like that either, so we're going to stick to an overhead cam variant with 4 valves per cylinder. And again, it's going to be an all-cast engine. I'm going to try to stay away from quality sliders this time, and we might even stay away from turbos if we can. 500 horses uh, might be possible, but it's it's very likely we'll still end up having turbos because turbos are fun. <laughs> okay, let's just start it off with all-cast components, and we'll move it up from there. This engine that I'm building off of is a clone of an engine that made like 1,300 horsepower or something like that. At least it used to before it currently is broken. Also, you can see the variant is all screwed up, so let's put that back up to 4 liters. Good thing I caught that, my goodness, that would have been really messed up. Uh, and we'll lower this down. Everything is going to be broken here, by the way, until I get this turbo stuff sorted. Um, compression, all that, we'll come back to. Turbos, uh, it's currently two turbos. I believe we can only get one. Although, it's supposed to be two turbos, but I'm only seeing one turbo which is strange so let's just knock it down to one um, and we'll just leave it at a, a race preset for now and we'll come back to this okay direct injection race intake uh, we're currently running low quality fuel maybe that's why it was screwed up we'll just go ethanol immediately e85 is like we can't beat that race intake and headers and stuff and let's take a look at the graph oh <laughs> that's not that ain't looking good uh easy way to fix that AI tune it for power, let's see what we got. Failed to tune the engine. That is beautiful. Okay, what's wrong with this thing? Ah, piston and Conrad reliability is non-existent. So we're gonna immediately bring those up to titanium. And pistons, we'll go forged. That fixes both of those issues. Let's try the AI tune again. Failed to tune the engine into a working state. That is beautiful elegant and now it's naturally aspirated because this thing is majorly screwed that's 285 horsepower with some pretty restrictive headers we might be able to do a bit better than that 
um, just by going over to exhaust and increasing the size or just putting them onto tubular race. Oh, 400 horsepower, easy. Okay, maybe we don't need any turbos. <laughs> Who knows? See, the problem is, if I can get this to work, I might struggle with the i4 because this is, I mean, it's the same amount of displacement, but it is less cylinders. I'm very, very curious to see how the curves sort of align in that way. Even if we have to turbo the i4, um, it might just make for a better comparison because everything else is going to be the same, except if you think about it, the i4 is like... If you combine two of them together, it would be doubling the displacement of the V8. So it's weirdly like half a V8, but with the same displacement. I don't know. We'll see what that does to the torque curves and stuff. That's really the intrigue for today. Last time I was able to keep gearing the same and stuff, so we're going to attempt that again today. Um, we'll just have to see where it ends up with all of this. I, seems like 415 might be max so that's not quite as much power as i was hoping 500 just sounds really good so that's why i wanted to go with that <laughs> to be honest maybe vvt and vvl can help us out 420 oh no 440 and our valves are a little restrictive okay i very easily was able to get up to 500 horsepower naturally aspirated despite this being a four liter v8 it's not particularly big or anything like that it doesn't need to be uh, but I ended up basically just putting uh, VVL and VVT on it, which is over here, changing the profiles of that a little bit to get a better top end. We have great, great torque down low. Um, horsepower is a nice graph too. It's like a very horizontal torque curve. That 512 was beautiful, but I just got to knock it down a little bit. I did end up having to put quality plus 5 on everything, so I'm going to stay consistent with that if we can with the i4. We might have to increase the the quality significantly to make this work but we'll keep those numbers in mind um let me just drop some stuff down uh that hopefully won't destroy it vvl profile a little bit that's actually gaining power we're going the wrong direction here all right that's it exactly right there i'm actually going to take a picture of this so i don't forget 500 horsepower 466 newton meters of torque let's see if we can do something comparable with a four cylinder well first let's design the rest of the car but there you go that's the engine right there naturally aspirated very very high quality components still all cast awkwardly the i believe the crank yeah i ended up going up to billet steel but everything internally is very high quality stuff highly reliable and decent horsepower beautiful torque curve i like it i think it's turned out really nice the valve cover is apparently made out of okay i was worried that was leather there for a second but thankfully it's not we'll make it purple because purple is cool and uh yeah i guess that's all we can do let's build the rest of the truck so we're going single cab long bed of course of course i'm curious though if there's any real issues um, seems like nothing in particular is <laughs> the gearing is wrong uh, that's to be expected uh, what else we got though body color the, the red has to change I think we need something different I've been feeling these like weird fluorescent colors these days so highlighter yellow or maybe construction hat yellow is a better term for this now we'll go for this like off orange color I just really <laughs> it, like the look of that um, yeah, that'll be good. So this one is our V8, so we should probably note that down. Getting into the fixtures, I'm just going to change this to say V8 power. There you go. It doesn't actually fit now. <laughs> I have made a mistake. Uh, okay, no space. There we go. V8 power. That's what I want to see. Oh, this has a hitch on it. Oh, oh, this gives me some ideas. Um, other than that, though, is that good for styling? We don't need to do much to this thing. It is a work truck at the end of the day. I was thinking about putting a cap on it, but let me see if I have anything that works for that. Now, it seems like the best way to put a cap on would be to change it into an SUV and then basically, I don't know, draw a line on it somewhere to indicate that it's a detached piece instead of a full one. It's okay, though. This thing is ready to be tuned because, yeah, it has some issues. Uh, looks like I was anticipating a little bit too much top speed. Let's lower that down. 262. Is that okay? Probably somewhere here is reasonable. A little bit of overdrive in um, what ninth gear? Holy crap. I'm actually going to play it safe. I'm going to go four-wheel drive, and then we can change it. It will be selectable. 
Uh, I'm fine with the advanced auto. I don't think we need that many gears. I'm going to drop it down to six gears. And hopefully that'll... I mean, our top speed is lowering, but it should be fine. Okay, we'll leave it there. 260 is the top speed. 277 is the theoretical top speed. Um, gear spacing and stuff. We have a bit of wheel spin in first. Um, I think that's pretty good. That's a very high first gear ratio. Uh, but final drive and such makes sense so yeah should be good very very fast from 0 to 60 it does have a geared LSD as well so that'll be perfect uh, everything here looks good though I think that's gonna be perfect very little wheel spin so the complete opposite of the one from two weeks ago I'm gonna switch a rate up into the semi slicks that'll just basically disappear with the wheel spin I know it's a it's a work truck with semi slick tires realism is out the window okay it's also a 500 horsepower work truck so i ain't gonna complain i'm gonna do 305s on the front and the back which means we have some pretty significant meat on this truck uh, i'm also gonna pop them out as much as i can we're going from work truck to work and play truck but the thing is that this has to work for both engines so Hopefully it's good enough. Uh, keep in mind that the V8 will probably be heavier than the i4, I think. I'm honestly not sure with the same displacement. I mean, a V8 would theoretically have more iron in it, uh, being a bigger block, but that i4 is not going to be light. Brakes and stuff, I don't particularly care. They'll just be whatever it was on the truck before, and aero and everything else. I think we are good on the first one. Let's send this into BeamNG and make a second. Man, this thing looks like a Tonka truck, but I just updated the names and stuff and it's about time that we did something else here. Let's make an i4 that is indeed a four liter because that's where it's at these days. This is gonna drastically change the performance of this engine and pretty much everything else about it. The, d the stroke and the bore on this are gonna be pretty big. Um, let's see. Darn, it's so close to being square. I can't quite get it to be square. Um, but, okay, we'll make the bore like 1.1 millimeter bigger. It's not going to make that much of a difference. I'm breaking my own rules here for the sake of the build. I want this thing to be good. So, um, it's as close to 4 liters as we can get. I believe the other one was 3996. So, this one might have a very, very slight advantage in that regard, not to say that the testing here is scientific in the slightest. That being said, we're starting off from the same place because I'm building this based on a clone of the same engine, so naturally everything is ruined and it's totally breaking, and it probably makes 300, wow, it makes 300 horsepower? Holy crap. Okay, AI tune it for power, let's see if we can fix this thing. That's a cool, what the, f okay, I was gonna say that's a cool, uh, 190. 190 hmm that's not enough that is not enough that is a really low rpm limit we're gonna have to do a lot better with these components if we're gonna be able to get to where i want to be that is just not even close to enough up goes the balance shafts boys this being such a large engine and also being mostly square 431 horsepower that is unexpected but i am very pleased about it not gonna complain um, I was just going to say that it's kind of difficult to get it to rev, apparently, at least the way I have it set up. So we can probably get a little bit more. Yeah, the game has artificially limited us here. Piston stress, well, <laughs> that's to be expected. 465, oh, man, 7,000 RPM. Okay, everything is breaking once we get too high up, but um, let me just knock that down to 69. And let the game update itself 20 times here good okay We're, we can make it to 500 horsepower if we can continue with this um lightweight forge yeah okay we're probably not going to cross 840 uh newton meters of torque so we're probably good to just go with the lightweight stuff ideally this thing will be able to reach the desired power without too much difficulty that being said we're about to have some difficulty the torque curve is still super flat on this one. I'm worried now that there's not going to be any difference between the two engines. Um, uh, VVL profile up a little bit. I know that the timing on it is absolute trash, so let's reset that. 469, man, we are close. Okay, exhaust flow a little bit higher, intake a little bit higher, and we might have something here. 
Just to put things in perspective from what we're looking at here, when I had the V8 finished, it was rocking 500 horsepower at 8,000 RPM and uh, 466 Newton meters of torque uh, at 6,100 RPM. This engine has the torque at a higher figure. So the torque is 511, which is higher by quite a significant amount. That's like 50 higher uh, than the V8, but it's at also a higher RPM, 500 RPM extra. And then the four cylinder here is not as high of an RPM limit, but it is 20 horsepower down, or I guess 18.8 horsepower down for now. We gotta build this thing up and see where we end up because this is just getting weird. We're not even gonna be able to rev this as high as the V8 does. So now it, I can't make them as similar as I want them to be, but I think that's kind of a good thing. We'll just have to see how this goes. Oh my goodness, there it is, there it is. Okay, we're, I don't want to dip into unreliability, but we are at the very tip top of the curve, which is not ideal. You're usually we want a little bit of runoff, so um, slight unreliability, I guess. Hold on a minute, bear with me while I figure this out. Wow, that cam profile change makes a huge bump in the low end. That is going to be awkward right here, but that's right where the VVL kicks in. If I lower it down a little bit. Oh. Oh my goodness, that's really cool. Okay, I'm starting to get a better hang of tuning engines and I feel like the V8 might suffer because of it. Okay, okay, I've done it. I have made 500 horsepower. This is without any stress. And I'll admit that the engine is not perfect because we are only at max power at the very tip top of the graph. Realistically, we should have some runoff, but it does dip into stress, which is not what I want. Um, it does now make 500 horsepower at 7100 rpm which is 900 rpm less than the v8 but this thing is making an additional like 60 is my math correct there 518 minus 466 is like a decent amount of extra torque that's quite a bit okay i did the math and it's it's 52 so i was a little bit off there in my prediction but 52 newton meters of torque and obviously this one hits higher, but it's gonna be a very interesting difference here. I'm, I'm excited for this challenge, um, for the actual driving portion of it. Now, let's keep the engine the way it is. It looks cool. And we gotta change this, at least in terms of the paint. Um, I'm gonna change the primary color of it to be something else because it just, yeah, it shouldn't be the same, come on. Basic paint mode, uh, ooh, last time we did green, didn't we? Green is fun, let's do, do, let's do green again. This one says i4 power on the back just so I don't forget and when it comes to the gearing and stuff I don't think I need to change anything the estimated top speed is actually way way less for some reason <laughs> what changed this was not 205 by the time I was done with it though what happened here hold on a minute yeah it's 277 on the v8 okay I'm, I'm gonna change it to 277.8 on the i4 and we'll hope that that does it okay I think that's as close as it's gonna get in terms of the rest of this um, everything else is going to stay the same. The brakes, the wheels, the everything, safety, all that stuff. Let's send it into BeamNG and see how they do. Let's keep in mind that weight as well. I completely forgot what the other one was. Um, actually, let me just double check that. I want to point out something really odd that I just noticed before we get into BeamNG. So the V8 is actually lighter than the four cylinder. 2164, 57 front, 43 rear on the V8. 2189, 58 front, 42 rear on the i4. So that means this big boy i4, which makes a boatload of torque, is actually heavier than the V8. Keep that in mind. All right, so here are the trucks in BeamNG. We're back on the automation test track because of course we are. I like the automation test track. You remember the stats from the previous section of this video, don't you? Big horsepower, big numbers, 500 horsepower on both of these trucks. Different torque though, the i4 has 52 more uh, newton meters of torque and it hits at a higher RPM, although the V8 torque naturally hits at the lower RPM. That's what you get when you get more cylinders. So, differences between the two trucks, the i4 actually weighs a little bit more, it's not significant, but it does weigh more, and it's a little more on the front, uh, naturally. I guess there's just more iron in the block or something, because that's how it works here. And everything else is basically the same, same gearing, same everything. Um, yeah, let's listen to how they sound, I enjoyed doing that last time. So, coming out of the V8, here we go.
both of these cars have no exhaust pipes, so, uh, well, they have no mufflers, I mean, so, you know, they sound pretty darn decent. Let's just quickly go into uh, sport mode, because we are in four-wheel drive, and we do have low range, which is cool. That's very truck-esque. A little bit of hesitation in the gearing on this one, which is strange, but it does drive well, which is good. It feels fast as well, no hesitation. Uh, once you get moving a little bit off the line though, maybe that's the four-wheel drive system and it could also be the ESC messing with me I suspect that this thing is with his v8 is going to be extremely fast around the track and also Very very comfortable. It's gonna be good. All right, let's test out the i4 now that that v8's out of the way Let's listen to some i4 power Here we go. Oh That's way different is that a Honda Civic revving in the distance? No, boys. That's my truck. <laughs> All right. Uh, put it in sport mode as well. Still four-wheel drive. Definitely not as much hesitation. It does feel a little bit awkward. <laughs> but uh, it's mostly down to the sound. Like, power is good. Feels... To drive, it feels exactly the same as a V8. I'm literally doing an unnearly straight line, so it's hard to tell. Speed feels good, though. Oh, yeah, top gear, and oh, let's go meet its rival. Ah, this is what BeamNG is all about. So my testing methodology last time was a little bit questioned, and I can understand that. Uh, you know, actually, now that I think about it, why the heck did I make these things a uh, automatic when I literally just made a sim rig with a shifter on it. Anyways, don't worry about it too much. Basically, what I'm thinking is we're going to do some sim rig racing because that is very, very fun. Um, but first, we're going to just drive them around and see how they feel. And yeah, <laughs> but we'll get into the sim rig and I'll give you some times too. Feeling is one thing and times are another. So yeah, we need some imperial data here. Also, by popular request, I will do a drag race as well. Let's do that soon. But first, V8 one just driving around. I mean, four-wheel drive, sport mode, no ESC. It still does hesitate a little bit off the line, which is a weird little phenomenon going on here. But you can see what I'm talking about here. Oh, you know, actually, it might be gone. It doesn't hesitate like it used to, which is good. It must have been the ESC screwing with it, just reducing the power when it needs that traction the most. Oh! Oh, that's a wheel missing. Actually, that's two. Impressive. I think stuff like the drag race is really going to come down more to my timing, because these things are equally powerful. Torque is, again, a, it, it will make a difference, but is it going to make that much of a difference? We'll have to find out. What I'm going to do is I'll have the AI drive both, so we'll be able to get a real definitive comparison. Uh, but then I'll drive the opposite in that case. <laughs> we'll try and get the best of the best here. So, uh, what's the real comparison between these two? If they make the same power and they're the same displacement, then what is the difference maker? And I guess it really just comes down to cylinders above all else and what extra cylinders can do for you. If you think about it in some cases, like big semi-trucks, they have inline sixes, which is less cylinders than I have in my own truck. I mean, it's less cylinders than you can get in performance cars. You would think big trucks, more cylinders, but the reality is it's big trucks, big cylinders, just like the uh, big uh, stroke and bore in our inline four. Big cylinders means you can get a lot more juice out of them, <laughs> or in the case of diesel, it basically means like massive like 11 plus liter engines even though they don't have a ton of pistons but that makes sense for those trucks that's what they need and that's what's worked for years so yeah there's a lot of inline six diesel engines and there's a lot of big v8 diesel engines too also in some lighter duty trucks there are big inline fours similar to what we're running here or at least soon <laughs> by the way this is so much more enjoyable than the datsuns that i ran the two weeks ago because actually being able to control it makes a huge difference all right driving around the four cylinder uh this is still a four liter four cylinder we're making mega power with this thing it doesn't feel heavier i mean it's, again it's not significantly heavier so it doesn't really matter um, one thing with a truck is that the back end of it is light 58 percent of the weight in this thing is in the front 
and that would mean 42 in the back. It's not, <laughs> yeah, it's not a great weight balance. But being rear wheel drive, again, that's pretty bad. If you slap a trailer on here or put some weight in the bed, it might actually be faster, <laughs> as awkward as that sounds. This thing was made to tow, at least theoretically. When it comes to the four cylinder, I guess I'm just mostly interested to know if the large displacement actually matters as much as I think it would. Like if we had a 500 horsepower inline four, and I mean, say we made it a two liter, we could definitely make that with a turbocharger, and that would change the game significantly, because turbos obviously are different than natural aspiration, but... Do you think that the torque would be lower than the V8? Because I think it might be. Even though the V8 is naturally aspirated, our torque might be completely off. Alright, let's talk about this thing in terms of drivability. It literally feels exactly like the V8. Power delivery, everything, feels pretty much spot on with the V8. I am not in my not very sensitive hands. I'm using an Xbox controller. Um, I'm not really noticing any like major differences enough to warrant a, a complete like comparison as I was doing before. If you remember last time, again the torque curves were drastically different, so it really made the driving obvious. This time, they're not that different. All right, I think it's time that we took these things into a drag race, and then we're gonna do a lap of the automation test track in the sim rig. Hopefully you're in for that. And then, yeah, let's crash into a pole. <laughs> they both crash pretty darn well. All right, we're here in the West Coast map. Uh, this one is my favorite drag strip, probably just because there's stuff around it and there's bleachers and things. Um, you can do drag races in the grid map, but it's just not the same, man. Okay, let's go. I'm, I'm giving myself the biggest advantage I can here. I'm using the V8 power, but I'm also running no ESC, four-wheel drive, and I'm going to try to launch in sport mode. Hopefully this thing will let me do it. Uh, first thing we got to do is probably put it or put her in park. View the details, boys, because it's time to beat some people in the drag strip. Okay, my opponent is actually going to be the other truck. It's going to be the I-4 in the same color as it should be. And hopefully this will do it. I'm, again, going to try my best here to get a good time out of this truck. We'll see what the AI can do, too. Um, I don't know if it's going to be able to rev like I will. I don't know if the brakes are going to hold me well enough to be able to rev like I want to. Lining her up on the line. Little, actually, I'm a little off the line, aren't I? Yeah, no. I'm not going to be able to rev up. Sport mode. I had to shift into it extra there. Okay, V8 sport mode slightly quicker. Look at how stable this is. This is ridiculously stable. Fourth gear. My best time so far is a 12.4, and the AI managed to do it in 12.996. Although, did I get DQ'd? <laughs> no, it doesn't look like I did. Okay, let's try that. So I got a 12.497, and the AI got a 12.996. We'll try again and see if I can do better. The AI is like inching towards it so, so slowly. This truck's not that hard to drive, my man. There we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, I'm late on the draw. This ain't gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, it entirely depends on my start time. That was slightly slower. This, maybe it's the sport mode, but I do feel like the V8 is a little bit quicker. 12.6, which is slower than last time. AI, again, very consistent with a 13. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, one more time, and then we'll try it switched. 12.557 on a really good start. AI again, extremely consistent, 13. The best that they did was a 12.999, or whatever it was, 99 something. Let's try that again, switch places, and see if I can do better. All right, line them up, boys. Time for the I-4 versus the V-8, but except I'm driving the I-4. We'll do three runs again, and we'll do a little comparison at the end to see which one was the best. Uh, I suspect that I should be able to do better than the AI. I was routinely 0.5 seconds faster than them. That doesn't mean I'm going to be able to do it every time. The V-8 taken off. Oh, my goodness. Hold on a minute. <laughs> What have I done here? Um, because I did not have a, bet and a great start there, but the AI should be fairly consistent. 12.6! Holy crap, man. 12.9 for me. That was awful. But the, the AI did so much better with the V8. Wow. 
I'm surprised. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, that was pretty much the best start that I can get trying to get into sport mode. And the V8 is still taking off. Very slight adjustments there. Man, the V8 is faster. What the heck? It's, it is just faster. I failed because I lost, but <laughs> it's straight up faster. What on this fine planet is going on here? Okay, that was a little bit of a slow start, and once again, I am being absolutely slapped. <laughs> I think my best time was a 12.9. There it is again. 12.6 for the AI. Yeah, literally 0.3, I guess 0.36 seconds faster, something like that. I guess we could do an average, but... Man, I, th I think it's pretty darn clear what happened there. The four-cylinder was absolutely slapped by the AI's runs there with the V8. It was consistently better, and it's a better driver than I am. Is it? Like, the gearing is the same, man. I guess the gearing is just not as well set up for the four-cylinder. It does weigh slightly more. It has more torque, though. I would have thought it was going to be faster. I thought it was going to be faster off the line. And then it was going to lose a little bit of steam at the top end because the V8 can rev it out. But I did not think that it was just going to be slower in every sector versus the V8 truck. Strange, man, strange. You know, there's only one way to settle this. We're going to have to take it to the sim rig and do a couple laps of the automation raceway. Let's get this thing going. So you may get a little bit of background noise, but uh, this is my sim rig, boys and grills. I'm very excited to show you this. If you haven't seen it in the last video that I'd made for it, uh, link in the description. You're definitely going to want to check that out. But this is my sim rig. Let's take the trucks for a little bit of a spin here. Starting off with the, oh my goodness, the hood view is not amazing, but uh, we will start off with the, okay, I'm going to have to drive it from the outside. Uh, this truck here is the four-cylinder one. Um, it's actually been an entire day since I recorded the last video, so things are a little bit uh, muddy in my head as to what the actual specs for everything were. But I'm just going to do a little bit of a warm-up here. This is the handling circuit. We're not actually going to drive on this. Um, but I just want to get a little bit of a sense of how it feels to drive this with the sim rig, and then we'll actually get into the driving itself. Um, I just wanted to say that was something I should have said at the beginning of the video, but if you're enjoying this and you want to see more stuff like this, I would really appreciate your support either on Patreon or my YouTube uh, supporters tab section. Either that, just watching this video, liking and commenting means a lot. Um, more subscribers and views on stuff means I can attract more sponsors and higher quality sponsors. The sponsors I have now are, are high quality because I'm very picky, but Man, I've been trying to get some emails and I have not gotten any returns on most things. Nobody wants to reply to me these days. Um, so yeah, we need bigger numbers, boys. Big number, good. If you're wondering, the game looks like garbage, not just because you're watching it on a uh, screen <laughs> that is being filmed by a camera, but it's because the computer I'm running this on is my original PC, the one I started this channel with. And I'm playing at uh, 1440p, so I want high resolution, and I have the game limited to its lowest settings in order to achieve that. Um, GTX 780, boys, it was a powerhouse in the day. Not as much anymore. I mean, it's not that bad, though. It could be worse. It could definitely be worse. But what this setup will do is it'll allow me to get some really darn good consistent lap times because I'm, uh, thankfully, I'm actually not having to shift these trucks, which means I can focus exclusively on driving um, and we'll just try to get around the track in the best form that I can. The old creaky wooden sim rig, it's not that old, <laughs> is ready for business. Yeah, trucks feel good. Let's take them around the track. You're probably wondering why I don't just record the screen and it's because OBS has a massively negative effect on the frame rate on this vehicle or this computer. And so it just does not make sense. We're going to do the old racetrack circuit. I really like this one. Um, this is what I've been using as my like base test for things. I'm going to do two laps with each truck. And uh, obviously I'll try to make them as clean as I can make them. The cleaner the lap, the better. But for now, two laps. Let's go for it. Uh, I-4 is first. All right, let's do it. I just had to ma manually set it to uh, sport mode ESC, or actually no ESC, I should say. No big rev off the start. We're going to start in sport mode, 
And we're off to the races. Now let's try to remember the times here. I know you can barely see anything and you're probably also listening to baby stuff in the background. But the point of this is not really to watch me drive the actual cars around the track. If you want to see that, I might actually just straight up post it on my second channel in its complete uh, form because that could be fun. But um, if, the, uh, if the footage doesn't turn out great, then, then maybe not. Uh, I've been doing that more and more where I'm posting extended gameplay of this thing on my second channel just because I think it makes more sense rather than filling up the video on the main channel with like 80% sim rig gameplay. The idea for the future for this is I can continue to uh, test vehicles with the sim rig and get better consistent testing because a wheel and pedals is a lot more, uh, I don't know, it's a, it feels a lot more consistent to me. You get a lot smoother turns. Um, especially if I can drive better and better and as my skill improves with the wheel and the pedals, I should be able to do better um, with this track and with this racing. And then eventually all the showcases and such will be done on this wheel and pedal setup here uh, and it, with my new PC, not the, or my newer PC, it's, it's still four years old, but my current PC, my current main PC and not having to rely on an older one like this. Um, that's part of the reason why there hasn't been a showcase in ages, and it's because I haven't got everything set up yet. I need to move my stuff downstairs. I still need to finish my whole office here down, downstairs, which is where I'm at right now. And uh, once I have all that stuff done, we can finally do more showcases, because this whole setup will be hooked up to my main PC. Well, that was definitely fairly conservative driving, but no crashes, no ridiculousness. And I think that's it. Fastest time so far is 2.18. That's not bad at all. I'm gonna do that one more time and then we'll try out the V8 rig. Okay, rounding the last corner. This one feels better. I don't actually know what time I'm at, but I think it's gonna be less than the 2.18 from before. That is 105 that lap. And the total is 2.11989. That felt good, so let's go ahead and try the V8 truck, which I remember from yesterday was faster in the drag race. So is it going to be faster in this too? Probably. <laughs> let's see though. Okay, starting off should be set up properly. It's a little bit of a different sound than what we're experiencing with the four cylinder. Let's go for it though. Starting off the exact same way, sport mode. And uh, V8 power boys, even though it's got the same amount of power. Okay, V8 torque curve, I guess, is the way, right way to put it. Four liter V8s. I mean, there's a reason why people are still using small V8s in different performance cars these days. I think it's sort of the best balance of power that you can get. Um, other than maybe an I I6, which is really only done by like Mercedes, BMW, and maybe Mazda with the CX-90 these days. What other companies are doing I6s non-diesel? But yeah, as we reach possibly the end of like modern gasoline powered cars uh, it's fun to experience different engines and I'm excited to try out some of the weird ones that have come out recently but probably in like 10 years in the future when they're cheaper I actually okay this is not the right time for a full-on electric car discussion but I don't think that gas cars are going to disappear even in the next like 20 years maybe even 30 or 40 years I think it'll still be a standard um, maybe hybrid or plug-in hybrid but like the reality is that uh, electric cars are just not up to snuff yet I know it takes time and the technology will get there but yeah it just it just doesn't make sense at this point in my in my mind I kind of hope that gas cars stick around because electric cars are fine but I like the noises that gas cars make my wife and I have a hybrid RAV4 and when it's on electric it's nice and silent it's it's all fancy and stuff, but uh, man, when the gas engine kicks on, that thing sounds like garbage. But on a like my Hemi truck, for example, the Hemi sounds great. I love the sound that it makes, especially when it's a cold start or something like that. It's it's amazing. <laughs> I love the the V8 noises, and I love the V8 power too. I think, funnily enough, the Rav4 is probably faster off the line with all-wheel drive and an electric drivetrain, but the Hemi's more fun. <laughs> so. I don't know, you, you have to strike a bit of a balance. Okay, my first attempt at this, and that was a 105 on the second lap. I think that's already faster. 
214, so that puts me right in the middle, but that's four seconds faster than my first attempt with the uh, i4 truck. I'm gonna go again and see how I can do versus the 211 time, and we'll, uh, we'll strike a winner here, even though it's all me driving. <laughs> Somebody's gotta win. As I'm doing this second lap, I just realized a lot of sim guys have two cameras set up. So they have a camera on their rig and then a camera on their face. And then they also have a screen recording going on. I only have one camera and I'm using my phone, but if enough people are interested, it might actually be worth the investment to get maybe two GoPros or something and set that up. Although that's a lot of money, boys. <laughs> We're definitely gonna need a lot more viewership and support for that. Okay, as we come up to the finish line here, I just wanted to say I've been feeling with this one, it just kind of seems like the tail end is a little slipperier uh, coming around some of the corners. That's a 2.087. <laughs> wow. Um, that's a fairly significant difference, actually. I, I'm surprised at how significant that difference is. I didn't think that it would be that much. Um, <laughs> okay, no, this thing is majorly screwed now. Boys, if we had to make a comparison here between these two trucks, um, at the end of the day, the V8 is quicker, awkwardly, even though the four-cylinder makes more torque at peak. The V8 revs higher. Um, it has more low-end grunt from what I can tell. I'd have to, I gotta compare the torque curves. I haven't seen them uh, side by side yet, but you will have seen them in this video. So please <laughs> let me know what you think about the power delivery, but it seems like even with the same displacement, the V8 is still better, question mark, at least in my testing purposes. I'm sure that there are going to be reasons why it's not better, but it's, it's just like, I don't know, I have a bit of a bias towards the V8, there's no doubt about that. But it is faster, despite the lower torque peak. And it's a little bit of a lower stressed engine as well. Like, it's fairly easy for the V8 to make that whole power that it has. Uh, whereas it seems to be a little bit more difficult for the four-cylinder to do so. I don't know. It's, um, this is an interesting comparison, and that's the entire reason I did it. I just thought it would be fun. And, uh, I mean, that's the same reason why I'm driving over these bumps here, these gradients, just because I think it would be fun. And that's why, I don't know, that's why these tests exist. Because, man, the whole point of playing games is to have fun. But at the end of the day, I'm interested in what you have to say about it. What do you think about this comparison? Is it, is it legit? Is there something I screwed up that I can do better? Let me know in the comments. And as I said before, be sure to like and subscribe, uh, comment, and whatever else you want to do. I have a Patreon. I have a YouTube join button. Members are coming up soon. Um, everything else is, uh, yeah, as, as is normal. Okay, the trees are a little denser than I thought here, but... <laughs> I'm excited to continue on with this testing stuff as long as automation doesn't put out any new updates which I need to make a video on, although I'm sure that they will soon. We are anticipating an update from them, and now I am stuck in a tree. But with the new update will come a video on the update, um, but next week we're going to be getting into some different stuff. It's going to be uh, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit more IRL content possibly, or SnowRunner, one of, one of the two depending on the weather. But I'm excited for it. I hope you're excited too. Thank you for watching this video and uh, thank you for being here till the end. I'll see you guys again soon. More crashing into stuff in the sim rig to come. Oh, drifting, four wheel drift, V8 power. Okay, <laughs> and now Mustang and a car meet. See you next time. If you can believe it, I actually almost forgot about this, but we have V8 tier supporters. Uh, this is my Patreon and my YouTube uh, supporters combined, but Overlord, Terry one j Pope Davis, Heister, Sinlab, Goofy Place, Phoenix Shark, Badger, Baja Blast, Mancini Country, Shadow Jasper, Arlick, Valheim Milk. This video is way too long. See you guys again next time.